Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another quick view. This is a quick view. We do tires. We test, you, you know what we test around here? Tires a lot, a lot of tires. And I think that's because in comparison of all of the things, there's probably more tires than there are anything else. And as I have pointed out quite accurately, the only interface between your vehicle and the surface upon which it is being operated is the tire. So the tire is more often than not the single most important component on the vehicle. So choosing that tire is something that should not be taken lightly. Today, the, uh, another Canyon first, a Canyon quick view first. This is a quick view that will not be done. And I wasn't going to say, it's not like we've never done one without baseline, but baseline no, will not be the operator for, for this test of... Uh, the Duratrax Class 1 Pivot. And you will note that the Pivot is the newer style. So Duratrax, every tire used to be like this. We had the white embossed lettering on the side. These showed on some scenes some stuff. That was how they all were. Then when we got to the era of the Fossil, the Fossil has the, the raised lettering like that. The Pivot is the same way. It feels like it, it's got that little bit of tack to it. No belting, no ribbing. Feels pretty uniform throughout, uniform carcass throughout. The foam, unusual. I had to heat these foams quite a bit because they were, they were pretty mauled up from being inside the tire for who knows how long. The foam is determinedly bigger than the tire. It's much bigger than the tire. But, but I think there's a reason for that, which is it feels a little bit softer than a medium. It's like, it's like a medium soft, which is another thing from Dirt Tracks we have grown to not expect. It used to be every tire that you got from Dirt Tracks had the same foam in it. Like they, they mono spec their foam. So this one, when we shove it in, we still, we get a little, we get a little booty crack there because it's a little oversized. But like I say, we're going to operate under the assumption that they know what they're doing. They fit the beadlock ring well. This is a standard 24 millimeter beadlock ring. We're not mounting them on narrows or anything. We pretty much go for the same type of rim across the board. We are indeed going to do juice because the size of the foam, having to cram that foam, it's kind of, you, I don't know how well you can see, the, the lip kind of bows out. So getting these to seat, the trick that I use is I basically, I push the ring up until the ring is all the way to one side. And then we, we squidge this guy in here. There we go. Push him down. And then when we push him down like this, it will push the beadlock ring down to the other side. And our, our goal here is not to pinch foam between the tire and the ring and I think despite that the fact that the camera is on I think I managed to do it fire a couple screws in we will do these in a cross pattern because with big fluffy single stages they have a tendency to try to eject part of the bead so I'm kind of keeping an eye on the bead as we work our way around Mountability on these was quite good. Not 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 astonishingly good, but but pretty good. We've had some, we've had some tires fall onto the wheels. We've also had some tires fight their way onto the wheels and some tires fall off of the wheels. So I don't think I'd have to refresh my memory. I did a I did a tire spree several days ago where I pre-prepped everything for multiple tire tests. I don't believe I popped a bead. And now I'm going to turn it over and it's going to prove me wrong. No, we're good. I don't believe I popped a bead mounting any of the four. They all they all just went on just fine. These are the Hot Storms. They're a favored wheel for me for testing because it's it's six screws. Like there's no SLW, there's no nothing. We're we're we're, we're isolating variables. So while we have had other test vehicles to test things where the wheels, where the tires are too big, 
Like, we can't put 2.2s and we can't put ruptures on baseline, who's a full fendered Enduro SE. We have other vehicles for that. Now we have a vehicle specifically to, to test Class 1s, and that is our man, Wiley, the Charisma Coyote. Get into frame, my friend. He has recently had his suspension uh, effectively fully serviced, and he is running full droop, and in the true Canyon tire test fashion, he hasn't touched a rock since since we uh, converted him to full droop. So uh, you can see the, the weight of the tire kind of pulling it down a little. So we're going to find out how full droop works. He's so light that when we were running him on any sort of conventionally sprung system, it, it was not working. He weighs minus his wheels and tires. So what would what you would have to call an RTR slider, if that's a thing, in RTR slider configuration, he's three and a half pounds. He's got that short 285 millimeter wheelbase. He makes a class one tire, in my eyes, look perfectly scale accurate. Uh, I did decide recently to go with white rims for him, to go with his purple, purple, black, and white, what's not to like. I mean, the, the boy looks good. Uh, we're going to take the Class 1 Pivot, and we're going to take him out there, and we're going to test him on what is, to me, a Class 1 rig. He's got bumpers and rear view mirrors and lights and the whole thing. Look how, look how pretty he is. There you go. Full droop. We're going to see how full droop works. We're going to see how the pivots work. Uh, they don't have a steep hill to climb because the only tires that this gentleman has tested up till this point are the AT-ATs that he came with, which are a typical Amazon level of quality, and, uh, and these guys, which again were... A trail tire, good but not great. So so there we are in our Class 1 world. And hopefully we can press forward from here and this can be the Class 1 guy. And let us find out what we think in quick view terms of the Class 1 Duratrex Pivot. I've wanted to test this tire, but it only comes in Class 1. So I basically had to find a rig and buy it and build it to test these tires. Because all my other guys that are in class ones, they're already set. So here we go. Hopefully, I want these to be his day to days. So the hopes are uh, the hopes are unnaturally high. They're too high. The ride quality is is really surprisingly good uh, for having basically no springing. Like for full droop, uh, there's a spring between the piston and the bottom of the shock facing down so that the, the springs are pushing the pistons up. So they're pulling the suspension down. And there's, an, I didn't put the other spring, the helper spring above it. So this is full droop configuration, not half droop. Uh, I guess the, uh, the foams are soft enough because this guy was driving real nice. I think I had the belly on. They, oh, they need they need a they need a little more pepper. Oh, look at the, look at the belly hang. There we go. I have to uh, I have to I definitely have to transition into a class one mindset. The the clearance over the pumpkin is not is not crazy. Any any problems there were just mechanical hang-ups. We're going to get the same sort of mechanical hang-up here, I'm sure. The traction, though, is phenomenal. It, it, they, they, they're working great. They look good. We're going to hang belly here, so I'm going to have to try to push left here, right there. Okay, get the bumper past that rock. All right, right there. That's very, that's very much too high. Come back. 
Yet you can't get a lot of steer angle when your front axle is eight inches into the air. So we'll reposition. Shot a little wide. I'm not. I'm not getting a lot of steer. The and I'm. I'm guessing this has not something but everything to do with the fact that I have servo and axle with the battery mounted to the servo. I think that it's. It's the suspension in the rear is working great. The suspension in the front not working as great because I think I think I just need to go way down in oil weight on there. It's not really affecting the tire. It's just it's affecting the overall handling. And I can I think mentally distinguish between the handling and the performance of the tire. So we would be, some of this stuff would be easier. Like I'm, I'm noticing a loss of steer angle and that's because the heaviness of the oil is preventing the, the front end from staying stuck down. It, it's, uh, it's over damped in the front. Right there, give it a little more beam. Yeah, really nice, really nice, really consistent and if you're having a uh, performance issue and you can identify what it is right away, the tire isn't masking it, that's excellent. I want the tire and the foam to be transparent and uh, these are absolutely doing that. And also, how good does he look? Oh, so good. The tires are doing well enough, but this is one of those instances where we can talk about other, other stuff So if, you, if we have anything else to talk about, let me know. Oh, oh look, look at that. Like, uh, no, I need a little more grab. There we go. I had it and I lost it. Can we, can we get that front to settle? Yeah. Okay. And over, straight over. Oh, we had it. Hung the bumper. No, don't, don't, don't fuss it. Just, just go back and do it again. It was, it was right there. I dropped here, okay. And then I got just a little foot right, right there. And then, yeah, it's the bumper. We're, ca we're catching the back of the body. So this has nothing to do with the setup or the tire. Oh, it, do it does make it difficult. All right, well, we'll try, we'll try gut shot then. Yeah, these respond, I mean, ignore ignore that. This is a good shot of the underbelly. Uh, these tires respond really well to those, to modulations in, in throttle, like the, the real low creep, put it in a little mid throttle, give it a good burst. Really predictable, which is which is honestly kind of surprising because there's no triangulation of the lugs. The, the, the lugs are non-directional, fully non-directional. Uh, there's no chevron pattern there's no triangulation to the lug they're, they're they look a little swampery they've got a little swamperish pattern to them but a different lug shape they are a non-scale tire i don't think the pivot is a thing that exists in reality that that has a a, a, a bit of positive scale tire attributes. I think it looks pretty scale and it has the, the, the scale attitude of sometimes you have to use a little bit more, you have to use a little bit more throttle to get through. And all the rolls here is all over damped where the tire, instead of the tire drooping down where it should, the, the spring is the spring is very soft, but it's got 30 weight in them with the four hole pistons and it's still it's not it's not quick enough. See you hit it right, you, you hit it right. So the, the the tire is the tire's doing really well. There's a there's a little bit of uh, from the comments in here uh, from the side Miata commuter. One of uh, Carl Canyon's channel members 
suggested the pivot to me a long time ago. And here we come around, we wrap full circle to come around to where I've built a rig, kind of for the tires. Uh, a common thing in the canyon is build a, uh, a rig to fit a body. And in this instance, we were building a rig to fit a tire. Yeah, I also think that this is a tire that's gonna season in really well. Once it gets a little feather on it, I, I think these will be downright remarkable. I think they're doing, I think they're doing really well right here. I mean, I'm testing them uh, the same way through the same parameters and through the same degree of difficulty that I would any tire. And these haven't complained about a single thing. See here on the side hill. Class ones sort of have a side hilling advantage. They lower the CG. Uh, even with that foam, which feels pretty soft, we've got a nice wide track width. These are just a standard half offset wheel. And uh, as you can see, he puts them out pretty wide. I'm not, I'm not mad about it. Wider is a little better. Can we get that rear to slip a little? We want the rear to slip to help us place better. Yeah, the heavy damp is is a plus here on the big side hill. I'm not in the position I want to be. I'll just throw a little reverse on it. It's a tire test. We're not, we're not getting points here. Yeah, look, look how nice it just tracks that line. So, you know, no tire does everything perfectly. These are really, these are really very good. I have the, and, and here's the best part about it. I can tell you right now, is this halfway? We're halfway through. We're halfway through another tire test protocol. And I can tell you right now, when this guy gets blown off the air compressor and cleaned up and put back into his garage bay, he goes in just like that. He's got his tires. For us, some may know, uh, many rigs will go weeks, if not months, before they get their tires. I'm not 100% sure Jake the Snake has found his tires yet. And it has been <laughs> it's been a long time for poor Jake. Well, that was really that was really close. We'll just do the we'll do the side pull here. See if we can get the belly over. Yeah, right there. Now he's not super high. He's, he does not have a ton of ground clearance, so I'm gonna try to. That, that wheel width though, and this body shape, the nice squared off top, the difference between the, and, and I didn't know the Toyota Stout was a thing. I love this body. This is a fantastic body, which is a 1960s Toyota Stout. Go look up Toyota Stout. You'll be like, I think I need one. Um, similar dimensionally to what comes on a base camp, but the base camp has a taper on the on the windows, the the roof tape, the, the passenger and driver windows taper in on the sides, and it's honestly a performance disaster because that that thing wants to land on its it wants to turtle, and when it does land on its side, it's really difficult to self right it because it just wants to it just wants to curly shuffle in a circle. This one, the cab is square enough and we've got that poke from the tires that this thing self writes with the best of them. Single stage needs a little more bean. It's staying pretty composed. And this isn't a bump. This is excessive throttle application. Like we get into a position, that's a bump. And that bump for a non chevron -y, a non tri I'm just gonna call them triangulated from now on, from a non-triangulated tire, that was a good bump. That was a really good bump. Now we gotta figure out how to maneuver with the fact that we're really, really low. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, uh, you, get a, you get quite a low center of gravity. I'm not sure that this guy's forward weight bias is crazy high because he can reverto climb with the best of them and you'll notice there's no hop so yeah 
the tire is in a in a, is in a, sub, a suboptimal state. The amount of tuning that has gone into Wiley the Coyote is small, small. He's gone through a couple shock iterations, and I don't think we're I don't think we're there yet. But uh, these tires are making him look rough. Undoubtedly influenced by my newfound affection for the Toyota Stout. But I think I think I think Wiley might be one of the best looking rigs here. Like he looks so good. Unfortunately, my brain is not fully programmed to drive in class one. And a lot of the obstacles here, like look at him, look at that, look at that little boy. Look at him over there and then look at the size of the Kragopolis that surrounds him. So if you're somewhere that doesn't look like a quarry exploded, easier time with this. Good side bite there. I'm, I'm hung. Slider. There we go. Yeah, the the pivot. The pivot enjoys the beans. We're getting some flexan noises. Are we awesome powers? Oh, oh no. Aw, oh, tell me I didn't. You, you all hear it, right? That's just a slipper, right? Does this vehicle have a slipper? Sounds like somebody uh, trying to drive a manual that doesn't know how to drive a manual. All four wheels are still turning, so that's good. Um, we'll take a we'll take a we'll take a smoke break here, and uh, we'll figure <laughs> we'll figure out what we broke. We're back on the course. If anything, perhaps the tiniest bit louder. And the reason behind that is, is what we had, th this is the stock spur gear. It is an 83 tooth, 48 pitch 83 tooth. And uh, yeah, we had a we had a small toothiness issue there, just in that one little spot right there, just ground off some teeth. So it ground off enough teeth that what would happen is when the pinion would rotate around to that, then the pinion could just spin and then this would move and it would catch it, it would go around a revolution and then it would just spin again. So I thought, I swore that I had another one of those 83s because I'm not running that 83 in the Vanimal, but I uh, couldn't find it. So actually it is pretty quiet. This is the stock 56 to 32 pitch gear that comes with every Axial gearbox. It, it happened to be a gear that had slipper pads on it and it has the same size center board as the shaft in here. So I did the math on 1483, which is 5.9 to 1, which means I should be putting a, basically a 10 on here, but I couldn't find a 10. So this is a stock Traxxas 11. And I will say, I can feel the little bit more, I can feel, I can feel the wheel speed. A little bit more wheel speed. So a 10, if we, if I stick with 32 pitch on this guy, a 10, a 10 would be, would be a better gear. Cause this guy, this guy's popping now. Low speed is still there. It just isn't quite as refined as it was before. And as such, I can't quite pick my line. What a difference one tooth makes. Yeah, his 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 bump now is is a little too poppy. Hey, there we go. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. He's not ruined. It also has that it has that 
why I prefer a 48 pitch gear. It has this like, we'll do the flyby. Oh no, there he sounds dead silent. Usually you get like a little whoa, 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 whoa of 32 pitch because they're never like quite as true. This one's not bad, it's not bad. Maybe, maybe we'll stick with it. Th there it is a little. Whoa, 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 whoa. Much more noticeable at low speed. This should pull here. Oh, we got a little belly. We got a little belly. Let's get a little more angle. Yeah, we're right. I've, got, I've got to do something about the sliders. And that's how you know your tire is working. I'm not thinking about the tires at all. The tower, the tires are allowing me to put to put Wiley in whatever position it need be. We can't do the pull up here because the lip is so is so high that the, the belly hangs. It's a it's a class one thing. Um, I'm not noticing the tires at all. I'm noticing what on the rig needs work. It needs lighter weight oil. It needs sliders that don't stick out three quarters of an inch out from the side of the body because instead of sliders, they're more like hangers. They keep getting hung up on everything. So we have to address that. He needs to go down. I, I can, I'll dig around and see if I have a 48 pitch gear to put back on there. But if not, this 32 pitch will refine it. I have several of them. I would just need to find a smaller pinion. We need to put it in there. And as slashes, not slashes, <laughs> as TRX fours come with 11s, I've got, I've got some 11s. So I didn't even have to hunt for an 11. Yeah, the tire is super transparent. The what appeared to be an oversized foam is apparently perfectly matched. To the tire because the foam is invisible. I don't I don't notice the foam at all. It's actually it's surprisingly quiet for there's the it's surprisingly quiet for 32 pitch. I don't know if he's got enough clearance to get the pumpkins over. I swear that's the slider. That's the slider hanging. Like I think I could make that, but there's a there's a spot just off the driver corner of the back bumper. The we couldn't see it, but the driver slider was just glancing off that every time I try to bump up. So, I mean, the oil will help, the gearing will help, all of those little things will help. But I think I think going to a narrow slider is going to be the biggest performance change on this thing. And then let's see how these do on uh, some really smushy dirt. So to answer a question no one asked, where would I put these on my mini Pantheon of class one tires? To me, I don't know if it's something about the size of the class one. Class ones either kind of work or they don't. I haven't found a tire that was like in that middle which is where a lot of class two, class three tires end up. You get that seven out of 10 that nobody wants. If you were to say, well, okay, well then let's pick something specific. Let's put a class one landmine against this. I like this a little more on this rig. I would have to put these on the van and see how they do on the big long wheelbase. I think they're extraordinarily well suited to this. If I were to put these up against a class one tusk, Honestly, for a build like this, I would take this over the Tusk because the Tusk is that inexplicable 3.93. This is a proper 4.19, a proper class one. And that 3.93, the, 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 the additional loss of ground clearance really shows. Yeah, these do really well here because this guy is a really light boy. Hot storms make for a fairly heavy wheel. He's probably sitting 200 grams per corner. So uh, uh, 1.6 pounds. So he's probably in the, I would say between 40 and 50% uh, unsprung, which is a good place to be. Optimally, we would like more. And also because he's so light and he's putting so little pounds per square inch on this, 
we'll get into the real soft stuff here. You can watch them just kind of dig. I mean, for a class one, that's doing really well on how soft this is. The bump out of the dirt is pretty good. Yeah, you can see them carving. On the spot. We've dug enough that he couldn't get through it. Yeah. So if you're ever watching one of the, if you're ever watching the tire test protocol and you go, that doesn't look that bad. Just be aware that like, it's so soft. There's a little side leg, grab it. Little, little beans. Oh, that rear is digging. Look at that hole. That's digging a proper hole. So what do, what, what, this, this conclusion was foregone. So what do I have to say in closing about the pivot? And what I have to say is it's well and truly and properly good. It's good enough that I will make you a recommendation. I'll make you a recommendation. If you're looking for a, a class one, a proper class one, 4.19 tire, with a bit of a scale look to it, but without all of the performance cuts that we're gonna get from a true scale tire. Like I say, these are a little swampery, but I feel, there's that slider, but I feel like they're doing a little better because they don't, they don't have to 100% copy a real world tread pattern. I think the foams work really well with them. And my recommendation, should you be looking to buy them, look at that right there, that was nice. Uh, the, the slider on the passenger side is just bashing into the ground. It's gonna be the first thing I address. So if you're looking to buy them, I will have a link below, a non-affiliate link. I ordered these from a place called Small Addictions RC. If you're looking to buy some pivots, I recommend you go there because they're cheaper than everywhere else. They're the price that they ought to be. Uh, when I went and looked at these up on A-Main, I want to say they were, they were either $25.49. They're around $26 a pair. And it, this is an instance where I feel like the old shoe metaphor is working against us. If you wear size six shoes and I wear size 14 shoes, which I do, we pay, we generally pay the same amount for shoes, which is relatively unfair to you, but overly fair to me. I'm okay with it. I'm not going to complain about it because I benefit from all shoes being the same price. Um, tires, I don't think should be priced like shoes. A class one tire and a 2.2 version of the same tire should not cost the same amount of money because one has four times the rubber in it that the other does. So $26 for a pair of class ones is outright offensive when a set, uh, a pair of class of 2.2 of ruptures is like $2 more. It's literally like eight times the amount of tire. So uh, Small Addictions RC is your go-to until they sell out of them. That's, that's where I would recommend you go to buy these. They're great. Uh, Wiley is, I don't know if I would go so far as to say he's ready for prime time. He's still got a lot of tuning stuff that need be done. But I think, and I hope, I hope it translates. I feel like the pivots, I feel like they made him look real good. Like he looks real good. But I mean, performance wise, I think they made him look real good. So uh, Canyon certified, unquestionably, really good. Especially at the, I don't want to quote a price in, in case that price changes over time, but let's just say that at the, at the time that this video is recording, at the time that my bare feet are dodging ants, Small Addictions RC had the cheapest price on the internet for, for pivots. And they turned them from really, really great to fantastic. Let's put it this way. They're not that much more expensive than Amazon tires. 
effectively, like really cheap. And they work on these foams. They work on these foams. Nice, very nice. Thank you, one and all, for watching. Thank you for uh, allowing the canyon to help fulfill your need for overly long videos where a gentleman, at least I hope enthusiastically, rambles at great length about toy cars and stuff related to toy cars. If that's your jam, then you're in the right place. So leave a comment below with any questions, comments, or concerns. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video, even just a little. Consider a subscription if you have not, if you are already subscribed, thanks. Consider a channel membership if you are uh, in, in a position to help support the channel financially. Uh, I can't buy every tire that there is, but I want to. And uh, in between now and when we hopefully meet again, please one and all do your very best to have a good one, everybody. We will, we will we'll catch you in the next one, whatever that might be, dramatically out under the bridge, through the tall grasses, Wiley disappears into the desert biome that is his natural home. We'll see you next time, everybody. Have a good one.